this is a very dynamic world. You're going to have to adapt. You're going to have to change. You're going to have to l learn how to unlearn, to relearn, to thrive in the decades ahead. And that means that you've got to be prepared to make a lot more mistakes as that's the way you'll get more successes. Don May is Australia's highest paid CEO as the head of Domino's here in Australia and across much of the world. But he wasn't always a high-flying businessman. He started as a pizza delivery boy. I was born in uh, Rockhampton, uh, central Queensland, and uh, moved to Cairns, did my first year of education in Cairns, and then was fortunate enough to move with my family uh, to Rabaul, Papua New Guinea in the year of independence in 1975. And, uh, I grew up in New Guinea, uh, incredible time of my life, an adventurous time of my life. Uh, then in 1980, moved back, uh, went to boarding school for a year in Charters Towers, um, and uh, or just under a year, and then, and then moved to Brisbane. Don says that as a child, he was always entrepreneurial. After finishing high school, he went to uni to become a high school art teacher. I didn't actually graduate from university, so I was in my third year, and I thought I'd uh, take time out uh, to start a new degree and, and I had nine months to kill so I started um, at Silvio's Dollar Pizza in Redcliffe. So Silvio's was a homegrown business, first company to deliver pizza in Australia. Well, I've always been a car person and so for me it was a fun job to be able to drive my car and, and deliver pizzas to people all over the Redcliffe Peninsula, out to Deception Bay and over to the bridge to Brighton. And, you know, I delivered pizzas for two years. Not very many people do a delivery part-time job these days for that long, but I really enjoyed it, number one, that's why I did it so long, uh, but two, I learned a lot about the yeah, customers. After two years delivering pizzas, Don stepped up to take on a manager's role at a local Silvio's pizza shop. It was here he learned about the business side of pizza. In those days, Silvio's was uh, struggling as a business. Um, you know, by then the the global pizza company uh, Pizza Hard had entered the delivery game, and so. Silvio's was thinking of opening mobile pizza kitchens and actually closing their stores. So I figured I was just filling a spot. But as it turned out, I doubled the sales of that store that year, uh, became manager of the year for Silvio's. Then a supervisor's role became available. And then what I'd learned in my own store started to apply to a supervisor role. And then before I knew it, I was the operations manager and a small shareholder in Silvio's as it as you know some of the things that we'd learned to survive um, and in fact even drive the business started to play out in more stores. Um, Silvio's then started to grow around uh, Queensland when it, we went into Newcastle, Canberra and then in 1993 the Domino's business came for sale in Australia because uh, it had gone through its third liquidation and, um, and so we bought the Domino's business, which only existed in Sydney. Domino's had closed its other stores around the country. And I actually went down to Sydney in 1993 and ran the, the, the Domino's business out of Sydney for two years, whilst the Silvio's business still existed. Welcome and thank you for taking the time to watch this video. My name is Don May and over the next few minutes, I'm gonna share with you some successful ideas on how to better handle the rush. Domino's was still a struggle in those first two years. But I, I did get to travel to the US and did get to see that, um, you know, what Domino's looked like at a success. And it became very obvious to me that um, it just hadn't been applied properly in Australia. You know, Australians are often very misinterpreted by, um, by Americans. We eat food very differently. We, we, uh, we work to very different employment models and we talk to the consumer in a different way. Um, and so once we had the Australian knowledge, but then there was this great business from a business actual operating system and by merging the two together which we did in between 95 and 96 and um, and because I was the smaller shareholder convincing the bigger shareholders that we should be Domino's um, I went out and franchised to prove the way in 1996 and so my first store in Morrowfield Caboolture um, just north of Brisbane became the first of these stores and at its peak employed about 84 team members. On a Friday night there'd be over 40 delivery drivers. In those days Morrowfield was a very small area. So you can imagine 40 delivery drivers you know, driving around the Morrowfield area with car top signs on. And that store became the second biggest domino store in the world at that time when there were just under 5,000 stores. 
So we went from being a really, really, well, a business that had gone broke three times. Silvio's was, was, a, was a struggling business at best. And all of a sudden we were, we were beating the other global competitors. And, and I had this ambition to get to 20 stores over, over 20 years. As it turned out, I got to 17 stores over five years. Many of these stores continue to become some of the biggest in the world. And um, then in 2000, uh, the biggest shareholders of the now Domino's business, the ex-Silvio's owners who'd, who'd converted Silvio's to Domino's, um, said, look, Don, you've had a lot of fun. It's time to get back into the bigger business. And so I did. I, I used the equity in my stores with another uh, franchisee out of Newcastle, and we ended up buying 20 and then 25% of the company. And a year later, I became the CEO. Once Don became CEO in 2002, he transformed the business. He made it one of the largest in Australia and then, three years later, in 2005, decided to go public. But he wasn't done there, he wanted to go global. In 2006, we acquired the rights to France, the Netherlands and Belgium, which at the time sounded completely strange to anybody. You know, we were going to go and sell pizza to the French, to the Dutch and the Belgiques. And the irony of that, that today is that business, I think we paid 8.7 million euros for, and I think it's worth about $4 billion today. Because once again, we didn't arrive as the market leader. We're now the market leader. Um, we're, not, we're not only the biggest pizza company in the Netherlands and Belgium, we're the biggest fast food company by store count. Um, and, and, and the funny thing was, we actually were given the Netherlands and Belgium for free in the French transaction because there was a fear that the Dutch wouldn't eat, eat enough pizza. And, um, and so that was, that's a really, that's a, that's a magic story in its own right. Um, and it's still one of our, our fast growth businesses today. Don is one of Australia's most successful businessmen. And with that success comes the spoils. Stories about the houses he buys makes for tabloid fodder. Surely a strange feeling for the boss of a pizza company. The downside of being listed is everybody has an interest in your life and what you do. And so for me, you learn to get uh, big shoulders for that. But the biggest buzz for me is more about our people and what they're doing. And that's what I try to, to put all of my focus in is, you know, that People can get distracted by what the media is saying and, and instead, you know, who are we, what are we, where are we going and that's really what counts um, and, and that's what we try to focus on. Hi, at Domino's Pizza we've been working really hard over the last three years. To be a leader in a business you've got to continue to work hard, that you are the front of the pack. There was a time in the 80s when it was really celebrated that these leaders could play golf and sit on boats and drive fancy cars and, and they weren't really in their businesses and that was the secrets of success, that you could build a team and then, and then retire but still stay. That's just not true. Those people are all broke and don't exist anymore. You know, when you see the resilient um, you know, leaders and founders of companies that continue to, to drive their businesses, it's because they've worked really hard. They've surrounded themselves with really high quality people. That's, that's one of the biggest keys is that, you know, how do you continue to attract really incredible people with different skills and then work to encourage them to be the best they can possibly be? Um, take responsibility for your actions and decisions. Not everything works. Things will go wrong. You will make some bad calls. And when you do, you've got to be able to, you know, announce that, hey, I'm, I was part of the decision or I even made the decision and it was the wrong decision. And this is what we learned. And this is why we're going to go forward from here. Um, and, and I think when you bring that all out, you've, you've got to still um, make sure that as a leader, where are you going? And, and yes, you have to run governance and companies and so on, but too many companies today are just dying and drowning in, in the business of running business rather than creating incredible products. You know, I'm coming on to 35 years in this business and actually it's, it's almost after all those years we were made for this current era. We're in the age of delivery where something like 50% of all retail products will be delivered by the end of this decade. We're currently around 20% are. So you can just imagine the extraordinary growth in the industry that we were born to be in. Domino's was born to deliver. Um, that doesn't mean we can be complacent because it's a pivoting, shifting tide of what all that means and there's an immense amount of challenges including that there's not enough human beings on the planet to deliver the number of packages required to be delivered. So you can imagine the focus that we have on being more efficient, but also how are we else can we deliver our product in the years ahead because of that tension. We strive to bring you the best in everything that we do, but being the best is changing all of the time. What I often tell um, young people that are joining our organisation um, is that, you know, have a go, that too many people talk themselves out of, of you know, risk. Um, it's, you know, we're taught as a kid better to be safe or sorry. So most people play it safe. At every moment they play it safe. 
But, you know, I, I, I've really made a really big decision and not regretted it at some point. But in that, it's when, you, when it brings the best out of um, myself and our, and our team. In that is that's when you're the most innovative. That's when you strive and, you know, you, you, you do find and, and break through walls and barriers and mental blocks. For me, it's still a thin crust pepperoni with jalapenos. That's my favorite pizza. I, mean, I People don't believe me because I do a lot of exercise, but I do eat a lot of pizza, a lot of product development. But if there's a go-to pizza, if somebody says, hey, we're ordering pizza tonight, I'm gonna say, hey, mine's a thin crust with uh, pepperoni with jalapenos.